Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the new pet of the Martlet as well as a bunch of teams for it, mainly using things that are available this week. So, actually if we go under the games right now under Soulforge, we can see under the PC, Mobile, and Amazon version of the game, underneath the little brown summoning stone, we have a Gob Chomper over here. Uh, so if you go do this, it's about a 1 in 8 chance every single time that you can get it. And this is pretty relevant, because if you guys may have noticed already, the current pet is all goblins. Goblins are the absolute most annoying possible pet one to do. So if you do have Gob Chompers available, which are actually available this week, it is excessively good against these. Uh, main reason being is they do twice the amount of damage to goblins. They also have a 50% chance to devour them every single cast they have. What's particularly noteworthy about Gob Chompers compared to the other giants that also have similar effects is they do start with empowered, meaning if you had this thing fully traded, you'd be able to immediately cast this. This is really good in something like pet battles since you have infinite amount of tries. So all you have to do is just go into a battle, hit them a few times, repick the battle if you don't get devour, and just basically keep repeating that until you win. As you can see here, pretty much just spam full devour, or I mean full gob choppers on our team. Pick uh, any browns or yellows whenever we can see them. And you can use your hero on it if you just want to get a little bit of hero HP, of course, as well. You can move that over, and hopefully we just keep getting devour each time. Uh, even if it doesn't, of course, you can just keep repicking. Uh, even if you only have one, it would still be fine. Just put a bunch of mana generators in here. As you can see, I went and receptor with the hero just in case we want to feed it mana or something. Uh, sometimes you'll need it, sometimes you won't. But look, as you can see there, very lucky devour pretty much every single time. And that's one of the teams that you can use for this if you are struggling with them. Very, very good at a lower level range. Next up is one slightly more expensive, but it uses the fact that there is a um, Great Maul. Great Maul is currently available in the event key drop table this week, as it is a drifting sand week. But if we go and just build a pretty standard uh, Great Maul team, so Great Maul, get a Mercy in there, though Apothecary also works if you do not have one. Get a uh, Inferno King in there. Uh, Inferno King, and either a Bloodhammer or a... Uh, Shegra, both will do. And we can go something like this. Mercy right into the Great Maul to get it to full mana. Again, you just go with a double uh, yellow banner. Uh, get Great Maul up. Basically, same premise, except this time we're using one 100% Devour uh, to try to win the battle with. So if we have alignment, we go for Mercy immediately or try getting a Papa Carry up if you're not using that. Ideally, you would one-turn it. You can also just keep repicking the battle until you did one-turn it if you have really low stats. Like, if that skull would have killed you, uh, you can easily just keep repicking over and over again until you get a much better uh, starting board. Then we just go for a Devour, and once we get the Devour down, you essentially win. Uh, Great Maul has a 100% chance to Devour on its ability, because it can only be cast once, so having multiple does not help you any. But yeah, you just do this once, and boom, you basically just won the battle uh, there forth. Uh, so we have alignment right there, we will go for that. And your skull is almost one hit because of how much uh, damage you end up taking from the enemy, since you steal all of their attack, as well as all of their HP and armor. Uh, do we actually have that? Yes, we do. So we'll go right into that, get a bunch of Doom Skulls, or Shegra, if you'd rather do that, if you don't have the Blood Hammer. Uh, and there we go. And that's everything for that. And now for a little bit of a cheaper team, uh, let's go and first claim our pet. And there we go. Oh, only one copy, really? Oh, well. But let's go into a third team that you can use. Uh, this one I will be doing, of course, not in um, that game mode, but in dungeons. Of course, you could use these for dungeons as well. And I'm going to be using the lower level version of this. So if you didn't have any, any, basically any of the legends from the previous team, here's basically what you could use for all of the pet battles, uh, or as well as dungeons as well, either or. Works for both. Uh, works for basically anything that has uh, relatively high stats that you kind of needed to feed out. Uh, Great Maw, Cockatrice, Apothecary, and Dragonian Monk. Uh, all these are easy to obtain except for the Great Maul, but the Great Maul is indeed in the event key drop table this week. So you'd be able to get it out that way. But basically, same premise with this team, except slightly slower, and of course, lower rarity stuff. Just get the uh, Great Maul up as quickly as possible. Then we have infinite browns off the Cockatrice, and we'll keep getting ourselves a bunch of barriers off of this. So, uh, and since we don't have the ability to just first turn convert, we're going to need to get Apothecary up like we did. Go try to find a place to convert on the board. It looks like green or blue. Both seem about the same, so we'll go for the blue there. See if we can get any mana to actually drop. We'll go for that. Uh, halfway to full. Might take us a little bit, but should be able to uh, survive until then. Uh, well, we'll go for that. Take another brown. You can use a red, purple, like a wisp or something on your team too, if you really want to cover every color. But um, more often than not, it's better to go to Dragonian Monk because you might be needing those barriers. It takes a little while to get up since it's blocked by so much, but once you get the Cockatrice up, you pretty much have 
uh, infinite mana. So right here, we're going to get rid of Gorgotha. He has 75% scroll reduction, so you want to get that out the way. Uh, normally, you'd want to get rid of the actual boss, but this boss does have Impervious, and you cannot devour something with Indigestible or Impervious, so do keep that in mind. I'll go for the yellow here. This should get both of them to full manas. Here's where we can kind of start using our barriers if we really wanted to, just to make sure we don't die. Doing something like that and just getting a little bit more mana. Throwing Apothecary as we need. Cockatrice we mainly throw when we need to disable out their mana. Not only does it fully man uh, mana drain them, but it also does an entangle on them so that they can't hit us with skulls. But at this point, all we really have to do is just keep hunting down skulls. Uh, we do not have a skull spammer onto this team. Uh, I guess technically you could put Last Slot as a skeleton if you really want to go and uh, try doing that. But for the most part, we should be able to find them at a quick enough rate that it uh, wouldn't really matter. This is mainly just to make sure that your team survives. Not so much that you win quickly, of course. More so just for newer players who may not have any other options. So we'll go and just take an extra turn from right over there to try to get a skull up there. It doesn't look like we get it. Uh, we can go disable that with Cockatrice, which I don't believe we'll do just yet. Okay, now we will. So we'll go do that, get the Entangle so we don't have to deal with any of its stats. Ideally, we'll get a Skull here, and nope, he takes it from us. So we'll just go, and I don't want to move that. It'll just give him one. Take that one over. See if we can go and actually move this into a Skull. I don't believe we can with that current setup. So we'll just keep going for just a little bit more barrier. I should go for all that so we can get another Pop Carry. Actually, good to keep spamming a Pop Carry in situations like this. Since it would allow us, if we just hit an extra turn, like let's say on this red, it would then give us some uh, better chances at a skull alignment, which we were able to get there. Let's move that down. Uh, none that we could take for extra turns into another one, unfortunately. But we'll go and uh, I guess we'll just take a basic one then and just go for that. Keep chipping it down there and there. Get another one. And we'll just need the last little two. And that will be that. And then we'll go do a team with the new monster pet. Uh, there really isn't much to use with monsters, though. Monsters are... The biggest issue with monsters at the moment, two things. There's no hero class that is considered a monster, which, of course, uh, generally that would make it a lot better if there was, since that fills a lot of holes normally. The other thing is, uh, monsters just don't have the greatest of synergies. Uh, no Kingdom is really heavily based in monsters. They're kind of scattered all over the place, so the synergy can vary quite a bit. But there are a few uh, pretty noteworthy ones, like, for example, Great Maul that we were just using. But other than that, there's things like Glaceon, there's things like Crimson Bat, uh, there's things like Cockatrice. There's a few of them out there that definitely aren't too bad. So right here, we're actually going to be doing an anti-true damage version of it. Definitely not the greatest of teams to be using, but as far as four times monsters are concerned, it's one of the slightly heavier ones. That or something along the lines of a Corvash related team with Glaceon. It's either Crimson, Mo it's either Crimson Bat, Glaceon, or a uh, Corvash Glaceon. A uh, main two reasons being is Glaceon's basically the best monster in the game, and it does uh, convert a color to uh, blue, all yellow to blue. So uh, putting the mana into them would work out quite nicely. So we're basically running with this Crimson Bat, Cockatrice, Green Slime, Glaceon. Cockatrice is an amazing troop, by the way. Uh, it is so good for so many things, but we'll be using it against this. The amount of bonus we now get is uh, quite a bit. Let's actually go upgrade it. As you can see right there, we would normally be gaining one magic, two HP, and two armor, but now we're gaining two magic. Uh, 4 HP and 4 armor total. And if we go and level him up, that'll be even higher. So we'll go get him up to his 5 low levels. This will give us um, 0.25 higher stats, which basically in this case is going to mean 1 higher armor and 1 higher HP. Oh, wait, no, it won't. Uh, because, oh, never mind. Yeah, we'd have to get it to 2.5. No! <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, because the stat was so low to begin with. Never mind. Yeah, we'd have to get it to 2.5. Getting it to 2.25 actually did nothing. But we'd get it to that in time. But anyways, yeah, you're still getting that double bonus. Not really too much. I guess that two magic could definitely come to play on something like Crimson Bat. Uh, not too many monsters use their specific magic stat, though. So doing it just for this bonus, definitely not worth it. Um, not really a huge bonus at the moment just because of the lack of synergy. Well, we'll see how this can do. Might just get completely destroyed. We'll have to see. So far, the starting board is definitely saying completely destroyed. But we'll see what happens. It is up against four times the vine, so... It is kind of expected to happen. I really want to try getting purples immediately and get Glaceon going. Uh, skulls are very tempting, though. Uh, we are using a uh, Crimson Bat, and what's pretty noteworthy about that is we do do two times damage to Divines, and it will do four times damage if they were already damaged. I'm not going to go for that here, though, because it will give him too much green, and I want that for myself, so we can go and try getting our mana down here. So this converts all green to purple. We don't currently have alignment off of that directly. So if we were to be able to get something like that, I would want to go for it. Well, let's go for the skull there. Hit it pretty hard. Uh, are you already going? Yes, you are. Okay. I think we're just going to go for pure luck here. Or we hold a turn and try draining it. Uh, we cannot, however, drain first slot, which is going to be annoying, though. So he'll go for his explode. He's going to get an Ubisa here. And it does indeed kill. You're going to do that to us? Okay. We'll repick. Can we find a divine that isn't as annoying? 
That is even more annoying, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> well, this one's even stronger. At least it's using the correct hero class. It has that annoying heal too, which makes it even harder to use the, the vines against. But we'll move that over. At least a much, much better starting board this time around. And uh, we do have Cockatrice, so we can get some really heavy drains on it. So we should be in the clear this time, or I hope so. Uh, we'll give it a shot. Move that over. Looks like we can go and drain him now. Definitely need to get that drain. Uh, one thing really nice about Cockatrice too is it does have a full mana drain. It does steal absolutely all of it, or at least uh, drain away all of it. So things that have very high manas, it is decent against. And I want to go for a skull here. Uh, I think I will, and just let him get a little bit more mana, since again, we can drain all of that at once if we need to. So again, we can just go drain all of his, and the higher it is, the more uh, spawn we can actually get. 4 to 1 boost ratio with how many additional browns, so with him having that much mana, we're actually going to get 4 additional for a total of 10 uh, browns to board. Generally, when you're using a Cockatrice, regardless of the team that you're using it in, you do want to try having a, um, a second brown into your team. Main reason for this is you're going to have a lot of excess brown normally when casting it, so you'll want it to go into something. So we'll go for another skull poke there. Get a little hit there. Uh, we can go for this to make sure we do even more damage to all of them. And if we can finally get Glaceon rolling before he does anything too dangerous, like killing out our Crimson Bat, we will be good to go here. So he is entangled. I could take this in a weird way, but I believe the game plan here is double check your convert all yellow to blue and all red to Doom Skull. I think we can get away with this. We'll take that over. Oh, you would! No! <laughs> No! Why? Okay, never mind. You would unentangle right there. Well, technically, we can do it off of Cockatrice's thing, so we'll go do that. Not the most optimal way, but we'll do it. We'll make it work. Take that over. Uh, he does do two times damage to entangles. Not anything like Crimson Bat being able to do four times, especially since his attack is a little bit lower, but I guess it's okay. As you can see, monster teams, not really the greatest of things. Um... They're fun to mess around with, but definitely kind of a pet that you're uh, more often not really only going to be using when you do those little quest thingies that it tells you, hey, go use monsters, and then you'll have it around. At this current moment in time, it isn't really anything uh, too over the top that you'd specifically be utilizing for anything, but we'll go and uh, I guess we'll go for another hit here. That should be enough to uh, kill due to the extra Doom Skull damage. Uh, no extra turn, but still it's fine. Uh, we still have Cockatrice. Cockatrice can just keep disabling, keep getting all the mana we need, and slowly uh, chip them down. That should do very little damage if we have to go... Oh, never mind, it cleanses. <laughs> Forgot about that. But uh, yeah, that actually would have hit pretty hard if it hit, but it didn't hit, so we're fine for now. Uh, we'll go for a nice hit, though it did cleanse off the Entangle, so we have to deal with that now. Uh, if I do this, he's just going to go for another Skull, though there's really no way I'm going to be able to stop him from taking any Skull, so we might as well just take it, go for that, go hit his back again. Ideally, not extra turn, he does. Uh, I can kill him right now, which is going to be good. We could also go for the Drain, which is also very tempting, as that might be a little bit better, but I'll go for the safe method and just go for a secure kill. Get that, and that should pretty much be matched now that we can just keep disabling this out. Not much that can get in the way, so we'll do this, get entangled. As long as it doesn't cast, it can never cleanse at all, or at least um, you can only do it by natural means. So it's not really going to be hitting us too hard during this little bit of time, and then we can easily kill it off the Glaceon. But I got a bit of a hiccup there, but you can see general premise. But more often than not, monster teams, if you are going to build them, they're built around either Great Maul, Glaceon, Crimson Bat, or Cockatrice mainly. Um, and of course, in any combination with other troops. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything with the new pet. Uh, definitely not the greatest of them, but at least it's better than literally no bonus, like the one from the uh, last new pet. And I hope those teams I showed were helpful. Generally, of course, if you're still struggling with pets, Easy strategies to use is basically what we did. Spam Devour and Spam... Uh, spam Devour, Spam Entangle, Spam Mana Drain, and Spam Barrier is basically the strategy if you are ever struggling with pets. But anyways, guys, if you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a wonderful day!